Is technology the cure for supply chain ills? Nitin Jayakrishnan is co-founder and chief executive officer of Pando. Hello, Nitin. Hi, Robert. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being with me. Nitin, what are the key business challenges you see that supply chain leaders are encountering now with regard to adopting new technology in 2023? A great question, Robert. I think, uh, you know, as, as we see it, every company, every brand globally is now a logistics company. Uh, and it's becoming front and center of growth strategies for brands everywhere. That also means that supply chain leaders are front and center of that growth strategy. And so more than any time in history, I think the time for supply chains to drive pivotal growth for businesses is today. At the same time, every business is also a technology business and uh, technology is permeating the supply side of the supply chain, but also the demand side and the consumption side of the brand itself. And so really demand supply networks across the board are getting um, digitized, are getting, uh, well, are moving to the cloud. Channels of go-to-market are evolving more digitally. Um, and businesses are fundamentally rethinking both their supply chain on one hand and how technology can allow leverage uh, in terms of their scale and, and, and breadth to be able to grow even faster. Within that context, I think the last four to five years has been specifically uh, cumbersome for supply chains globally. Uh, but I think the challenges that came to the fore in the last four to five years have always been challenges uh, around, around uh, labor and attrition, around uh, freight cost fluctuations, around capacity constraints, both at the warehouse as well as at the freight level, um, fluctuating demand patterns and supply patterns, both from consumers on one extreme and suppliers on the other. There's also macroeconomic factors around China plus one, around making America near shoring and, and uh, reshoring back into the US, et cetera. And so fundamentally the landscape with which businesses are expected to operate is volatile and complex today than ever before, but mm -hmm. that also presents itself with a, a significant opportunity to be able to leverage supply chains as sort of, uh, and supply chain technology as the way to, pivot growth forward. Uh, I think fundamentally, uh, this boils down into three buckets of, of challenges and therefore opportunities. The first is planning. Uh, and we talk about demand and supply planning. Um, and how can we therefore leverage modern technology to look at consumption patterns as well as supply patterns and really change the construct from supply chains to demand supply networks, number mm -hmm. one. Number two uh, is really on the execution front, which is uh, if you think about warehousing, order management, transport management, uh, you know, uh, uh, freight analytics, et cetera, to be able to really match the right carrier, the right node of your network, the right service levels of delivery and fulfillment to the right customers, suppliers, and products across your supply chain. And so the ability to really manage and map that dynamically and run a, a, a agile, uh, not reactive, but proactive uh, execution framework is the second big challenge and therefore uh, opportunity. And the third is actually a combination of these two. How do you create a virtuous cycle of feedback between planning and execution in a way that you know we're we're able to push the 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 uh, envelope forward in terms of uh, you know how we are we are becoming more consumer centric and how we are putting the customer first in the way we we address our supply chain. So. Okay. Really, I think those are those are the three buckets that most most companies are thinking about. All right, you're making the case very well for the need to to adopt and embrace new technology, but you use the word digitization, which can be a very confusing and vague word for many companies who say, "Hey, we've already got legacy software. We've got multiple point solutions in our supply chain and logistics tech stack. Why not just sit on that? Why not just deploy that to solve these problems? What are the risks that they face in continuing with the status quo?" Yeah, 
I think the world has changed, Robert. We're no longer, you know, when we're in the market talking to uh, the world's best brands that are really in the cutting edge of growth and customer centricity. Uh, we're hearing them think about the world very differently today than they did four years back, right? If you think about the evolution um, of, of whether technology or business, uh, you know, enterprise software really went through mainframe, to ERPs, to cloud software as a service, to it feels like today we're in the age of intelligence, all right? And, mm. uh, you know, in each of these pivots or movements uh, into a new world, there were things that got enabled that in the earlier world were simply not possible, right? They were unthinkable in the earlier world. Um, when we moved from mainframes to, to ERPs, the kind of data that we had access to, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the systems of record that we had access to were fundamentally different from what was happening when it was largely manual Excel sheets and, and, and calls and emails going around. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, when, uh, you know, we moved to the cloud, uh, the way we thought about data processing, the way we thought about analytics was fundamentally different. And we've seen what the value of that is in the last 15 years. Now, moving from the age of cloud to the age of intelligence, companies, the best ones, uh, market leaders out there are saying, hey, why am I so dependent on the tribal knowledge of my frontline worker for my ultimate fulfillment experience to my customer? If you look at the bullwhip of what is in their control and what is the most strategic, the, the touch points with their consumers, the most strategic uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, exchange of information, financials, uh, data, and finally product is the piece that is furthest away from their control and furthest dependent on the last frontline worker in the in the ecosystem. And so what we're hearing companies actually say is in this new world where autonomy, where it's no longer about digitization, it's about being autonomous, which is to say, hey, in terms of strategy and execution, how can I function in a way where I reduce my dependence on my frontline worker and really enable them to start thinking strategy? start thinking mm. long-term chess moves in their supply chain and rather than having to be weighed down by the daily firefighting of has my shipment arrived has my you know uh, carrier been paid am i choosing the right service for the right delivery uh, is my picking at the warehouse effectively done you know are the right orders paired with the right warehouses in the nodes in my network to be able to deliver effectively etc right so mm -hmm. how in this new world where where uh, you know, customers and, and brands are really looking to reduce the dependence on frontline workers for execution and empower them and really liberate them from the firefighting of everyday, uh, you know, everyday execution so that they can think about strategy. In that world, there are winners and there are losers, Robert. Um, it, the winners are companies that are putting their customers first, are thinking autonomy, are thinking leveraging artificial intelligence to enable that autonomy. Uh, and it's resulting in improved market share, reduced uh, you know, costs, improved service levels, better margins, and better free cash flow to be able to deliver bigger R&D spends and therefore better brand experiences to their customers. And the losers on in this new world, as was in the case in the cloud and the ERP worlds before this, are those that are sort of getting left behind in the journey, right? So that's sort of how we see the world. I see. Okay. All right. Well, that, again, is a very compelling case for adopting these new technologies, taking that tribal knowledge and putting it into maybe an AI or an artificial intelligence type engine, removing that responsibility or removing that dependence on the frontline worker. Thanks so much for that, Nitin. I really appreciate that insight into how companies can move forward with the adoption of technology. But I do want to take a moment to ask you specifically about Pando and how it is helping supply chain leaders today realize their vision of building an autonomous supply chain. Absolutely. Um, autonomy is ultimately the goal that uh, our customers want uh, their supply chains to evolve towards, and Pando is merely a tool to get them there. Um, we think about Pando's fulfillment cloud platform as the primary driver for companies to evolve from uh, vanilla digitization into more autonomous supply chains. We sort of think about this in four steps. 
Um, the first, and you know, in any part of your supply chain, you've got strategy and you've got execution. For simplicity, I'll take the freight and transport management procure to pay of transport as sort of an example. Um, in uh, transport management, you've let's say got freight sourcing, uh, which happens once a year or once a quarter. You've got uh, you know freight planning, which happens again every day. Freight execution in terms of transport management and global trade management, which again, you know, globally you do every day, and then freight audit and payment. These are sort of the four parts of the overall procure to pay process for freight. In each of these buckets, you've got strategy and you've got execution, right? So Pando takes customers on a four step journey. Uh, in stage one, we help them digitize their overall strategy setting as well as their execution. Uh, this would largely mean digitizing their processes, digitizing their workflows, digitizing their data, and bringing all of their users onto a digital platform. Most of our customers are already digital when we approach them, right? So they've got either point solutions or some kind of ERP extension that they're already doing. So stage two is to say, hey, strategy, you should still be completely dependent on your team, but execution, how do I make that completely autonomous? That is to say, hey, the happy flow, how do I sort of digitize that completely and automate it to a point where all the exceptions also get handled for freight sourcing, freight audit and payment, transport management, and global trade management without human intervention at all. And this means hey, launching a, a sourcing event. This means uh, you know optimizing your dispatches. This means uh, auditing all your invoices before you pay them, automating the payment process completely, et cetera, right? Everything that you do day to day, how do I automate that completely, right? Number two, the third stage is how do I co-pilot the strategy with you? Because as I become autonomous in my execution, I start understanding more and more about your overall business and your network, and therefore your, your flow of information, financials, and, and uh, products. Mm -hmm. And so how do I co-pilot your strategy to say, hey, in certain lanes, your freight cost is much higher than market, and you've got to moderate it. In certain lanes, you have the risk of depending on a few carriers only. You should diversify your base. Your network is not ideally placed. You've got to move your warehouses closer to your supplier or closer to your customer, et cetera. Right? So not just in terms of strategy to co-pilot the strategy, but execution being completely autonomous and the eventual state, which is where we're seeing a number of our customers now graduate to, where strategy and execution is completely autonomous and it becomes right. a virtuous cycle across their overall journey. Right. So that's essentially what we do across okay. transport management, warehouse management, and order management in what we call the fulfillment cloud. The journey to an autonomous supply chain. Some great advice there and insights, as well as telling us a little bit about Pando as well. Nitin Jaya Krishnan, thank you so much for being with me today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Rob, for having me.